Hello, my wonderful music students. My name is Jenny, and I know you're probably thinking, finally, why it took you so long? Well, let me apologize for keeping you waiting since May 2024. But guess what? The bug number six, partita number six analysis is finally ready for you to study. And before we dive in, let me ask you a question. To be honest, do you hate playing Bach? A lot of my diploma music students used to hate Bach. It's like, no way I'm picking that for my piano exam level of hate. But guess what after I introduced them to Bach's partita? Bach has written six partita in total and all of them sound very, very beautiful. And I walk them through every fascinating detail and they start to fall in love with it. And I'm sure you will too. By the end of this video, you're going to like this Bach's Partita number no. 6 because it's so beautifully written and it has a lot of interesting detail to be studied. Let me give you a little taste about uh, Bach's music. Out of all the delighted dancers in this Partita, the last woman, the jig, is an absolute mind blower. Do you know it's actually written as a fugue? Yes, Bach, being the clever guy he is, he liked mathematics and he liked to blend in the math mathematical concept into his music. And this field of Bach starts with a 12 note series. It's almost like Schoenberg's uh, 12 note madness. Mm. But wait, when the second subject pops in, suddenly we get 14 notes. And here's where it gets crazy. If you take the letter of Bach, B-A-C-H, and turn them into numbers like B equal 2, A equal 1, C equal 3, and, eight equal, uh, and H equals 8, you will get 14 or so. So this is the idea of Bach. He signed his own name, his autograph on his music. So he liked to start with uh, 14 notes which means uh, he put his name in his music and it's like putting his own self-portrait in music also. <laughs> so that is an interesting thing. So it's quite cool, right? So now I'm sure you are quite um, impressed by the way he wrote his music. And I know you are. You definitely want to stick around to the end of this video because we got something extra special for you. Yeah, a full detailed analysis of the first two movements and guess what you'll be able to screenshot the analysis right from the video convenient right so no cheating watch all the way here at the end and for this deep dive into Bach's Partita number no. six we have consulted tons of analytical book and we didn't stop there we refine it we polish it and we tailor it to make sure it fits the EMAS TCL diploma exam format perfectly. Think of this as your exam cheat sheet. It's totally useful and going to help you to score well for the exam. We listened to your feedback after the Beethoven's Piano Trio in the previous years. And this time, we are going next level. We have included answer in point form that to um, answer those questions like they ask you to discuss in details the structure, the texture of the music and the polyphonic writing in details. Plus you get all the juicy details because who has time for a long winded explanation in exam? We include everything in point form. It's bar by bar breakdowns, uh, modulations include uh, melodic decoration, harmonic progression and you name it. This Analysis is like your secret weapon to crush the upcoming Diploma Music Theory exam. And another interesting movement in this partita is the serenade. Okay, so let's talk about the spicy dissonances. Ed Bach wrote plenty of uh, dissonance in his harmony in this movement. And dissonances are so good, they sound like they are improvised. The character of the piece sound like they are being improvised. But Bach write down every single note that he improvised into his notation on the, onto the scores. And Bach wrote them all out. 
And let's not forget the temple, the Gavok, which is snappy and cruises on the third and fourth beats of each bar. We are going to love the way it dances in the last movement. We have marked the main theme, subjects, motifs, sequences, and everything you need to ace those tricky exam questions. And the chord progression and uh, the modulations are also stated, annotated on the music score. It's all synchronized with study notes, so you'll never feel lost again. Seriously, this analysis is your best friend for this Diploma Music Theory exam. And before you click away, they mention the detailed analysis is available for only $130. Yes, that's right. You can contact me and my email address is pianoplaying at yahoo.com and payment can be made through PayLa or PayNow for Singapore students and PayPal for international students. We are global people. Alright folks, that's all for today's video. Don't forget to watch till the end and screenshot those analysis notes. I'm Jenny and I can't wait to hear from you. Let's unlock the magic of Bach's Partita number no. 6 together. Now go fall in love with Bach already. Thank you for watching. Hi, let's continue with the detailed analysis of this Partita number no. 6. The opening of Bach's Partita number no. 6 in E minor is a toccata, which typically refers to a virtuosic and uh, improvisatory style of composition. It's over, of always fast-paced, displaying technical skills. The word toccata derives from the Italian word meaning to touch, reflecting the finger dexterity required to perform such pieces. In this movement, we see a mixture of arpeggiation, like here, arpeggiation, um, sequences, and some melodic imitation. Um, so we are going to touch on all this in detail. In bar 1 to 2, there is an opening motif and initial harmonic structure. The piece opens with a motif of arpeggiation, followed by arpeggiatura. In bar 1 to 2, this sketcher in the first two bars set the improvisory tone character, characteristic of a toccata. The harmonically, the progression is set in E minor, the tonic key. The harmonic structure of bar 1 moves from the tonic to the subdominant in bar 2, leading to the diminished 7 chord. Okay, so bar four, chord 4 and then diminished 7 which create tension and anticipate further development. The initial bar interplay between uh, arpeggios in both hands begin to suggest layers of voices, laying the groundwork for later polyphonic complexity. In bar 3 to 4, the initial motif is expanded into a series of sequences. These are this descending sequence. And it emphasizes the apogatura and continue the flow of improvisatory gestures. The harmonic motion here trans transition from 1, 4, uh, diminished 7, and there's a supertonic chromatic chord and chord 5, 9. The right hand uh, flows in semi quiver sequences, while left hand provides harmonic support, create a two voice texture. Each phrase is carefully balanced, maintain, maintaining the counterpoint despite the rapid movement. And in bar 5 to 6, the arpeggiated notes outline the modulation to D major. So this outline the chord progression 2 to 5. This modulation marks a temporary shift away from E minor into major mode, creating contrast and bringing brightness into the passage. The phrase concludes with a perfect cadence in D major. Okay, so there's a 5, 1, then after that it transits to 4 again. Both hands remain in the wind with each hand presenting motifs that flow into each other, creating a unified contrapuntal texture.
the in bar five to six, um, the both hands remain uh, in the wine with each hand presenting with the flow into each other. And in bar seven, melodic there's a melodic imitation from theme one. So it's over here. This developed from is borrowed from bar three theme one, which is here. Okay, so this is borrowed from a bar three theme from bar three. And the shift to B minor is signal here. So it's shift to B minor. And the harmonic progression moves through a two, five, uh, six, two, five, one. Condensure are uh, the, um, I think it's a circle of fifth chord progression. And the imitative counterpoint highlights the theme flexibility and adaptability and is echo between the hands. And in bar eight to nine, it con contain a circle of uh, fifth progression in B minor which I mentioned just now. And in bar 9, the right hand play a melody that will be imitated by left hand later on. So this melody later on will go down to the left hand here. And over here, the left hand, this melody will go to the right hand later on. And in this is the interesting uh, part about the partita, the exchange of heart writing. And in bar 10 to 12, the economy with melodic imitation between the hands. The right hand melody for bar 9 to 10 is later on uh, interchanged with the left hand. And the exchange of material highlights Bach's, Bach's skillful use of inversion and imitation, features, uh, typical features of fugue like writing. And in bar 13, it con uh, Bar 13 marked the conclusion of this section with the continuation of melodic imitation from the beginning here. So it imitates from the beginning. Um, the polyphonic writing in Bar 1 to 13 is both intricate and fluid, but employs melodic imitation, counterpoint, and sequence development to build complexity and drive the piece forward. The melodic imitation between right hand and left hand is a key feature here, creating interaction between the voices and giving the piece its contrapuntal depths. Let's continue with the next page, bar 14 onwards. In bar 14 to 26, we continue the analysis um, and it will encounter a significant development in the polyphonic writing and harmonic structure. Bach expands upon earlier themes and introduced new sequences, as you can see that I marked in this page. So the following section presents a bar by bar and phrase by phrase analysis, exploring the tonality change, harmonic progression, and polyphonic texture. In bar 14 to 16, it moderates to G major and it has an ascending sequence. The arpeggiation followed by uh, arpeggiation in bar 14 record the opening gesture from bar 1 to 2. So this record the opening gesture in this toccata. But uh, this is a transition into the G major which is the relative major of E minor. So the harmonic progression lead from a five, uh, lead from a cadence, perfect cadence of G major, and solidifying the tonal shift. The arpeggiated movement uh, in both hands create a layer effect, with the arpeggiatura adding tension before resolving. In bar 15 to 16, it consists of series of ascending sequence in G major, where each sequence is built upon diminished seven chords. So this is the special thing in bar 15. The right hand sequence creates a cascading effect, while left hand outlines the harmonic framework with broken chords. 
The hidden melodic line uh, in the starting note of its sequence form an ascending chromatic lines G form an ascending uh, chromatic line in bar 15 to 16 which is a G, G sharp A A sharp B C C sharp B and B sharp this line adds tension and chromatic color leading back to the tonic. The interweaving of voice in the right and left hand is balanced by symmetry of sequences. The diminished seventh chord enhances the harmonic ins instability, driving towards a resolution. The purpose of this is Bach uses the ascending sequences to create momentum, pushing the harmonic progression forward while maintaining a sense of unresolved tension through the diminished seven chords. In bar 17, Bach returned to E minor with a restatement of appreciation and apogetora seen in bar 1 to 2 this time. The harmonic progression moved from 1, 2, 7, diminished 7 on sharpen 3 and 4B to create a more complex harmonic palette. The thematic restatement in right hand in bar 17 okay, is accompanied by more active left hand movement, adding texture and uh, depth. The, this return to the tonic provides a moment of familiarity and stability while subtly evolving the harmonic structure through the addition of two 7B and Dimini 7 chords. In bar 18, it continues the harmonic progression moving from 4B in E minor, further elaborating the tension built in the previous bar. The right and left hand continue their interaction, maintaining the contrapuntal texture established earlier. The harmonic progression is enriched by use of Dimini 7 to prepare for the upcoming sequence. In bar 19 to 20, there's a, there are descending sequence and circle of fifth, descending sequence and circle of fifth progression. In bar 19, Bach introduces descending sequence in both hands, with the right hand moving through the hidden melodic line C, B, A, F sharp, four note motif, and contrast with the ascending line in bar 15 to 16. Contrast with 15 to 16, which is a, a ascending sequence. Here, the sequence are going up. So, in bar 9, uh, 20, Bach employs a circle of fifth progression in E minor, and this harmonic device is commonly used to stabilize the tonality after moments of harmonic exploration, providing resolution. The circle of fifth is expressed through both right and left hand with the melodic material between the hands. This further reinforces the harmonic progression while maintaining a contrapuntal texture. Bar 21 to 24 has melodic imitation and descending sequences. In bar 21 to 24, it features melodic ideas that are based on four note motif in both hands. Okay. The right hand represent a, presents a motif of A, G, F sharp, E, while the left hand um, follow with C, B, A, G, introducing a layer of melodic imitation. Sorry, it is in the right hand, C, B, A, G is in the right hand, and the left hand presents the A, G, F sharp, E. The harmonic moves through 4, 1, 7, 1, diminished 7 to confirm the E minor as the key. By employing melodic imitation, Bach creates a sense of cohesion and continuity while developing the thematic material. In bar 23 to 24, the right and left hand continue to exchange melodic idea, this time with inverted intervals. So, um, and descending sequences. The material from 21 Bar 21 to 22 is now inverted and expand. So in bar 21 to 22, okay, um, 
21 to 22 is uh, going this way. The moronic shape is going this way. But in 23 to 24, the moronic shape go the opposite way, which is an inverted interval. And the harmony remains in E minor uh, with the use of D7, adding tension before resolving towards the upcoming cadence. The section concludes with a series of cadences in um, E minor. So over here uh, in a 4 to 25, 26, it ends with a cadential 6 4 uh, chord progression to end the uh, bar 26. But use of polyphonic in this bar is masterful. It combines melodic imitation, inversion, and sequences to create a dense contrapuntal texture. The four note motif exchange between the hands in bar 21 to 24 are particularly striking example of imitation and dialogue between the hands. This technique not only adds variety but also creates a sense of uh, development as themes are passed back and forth between the voices. In bar 27, uh, this is a start of the starting of field. So let's take a look on what does the field mean before we analyze this. The field, field has is a complex and structured form of composition for keyboard words like piano or organ. Okay, but so the main element of field consists of subject. Okay, so from here you can take a screenshot. It serves as the foundation for the entire composition. Answer is after the subject is stated. Another voice answer um, and typically transposed to dominant key or it can be a real answer or formal answer. And the melody that accompany the answer will be a counter subject. And this is a complementary melody and chord that call the counter subject. So these are the elements that you'll find in the analysis later. And it consists of exposition, ex episodes, uh, scratto and pedal point and coda. So um, you can take a screenshot of this to find out, to understand further more on what does the field mean. So these are the elements that you'll find in the field. So I hope this information are helpful for you. Let's continue. From Bach 27 to 39, Bach further elaborates on polyphonic complexity in this field and introduced new harmonic progression that transition uh, through multiple key areas. In this section, Bach employs subject restatement, answer, counter subject, and motivate sequences to craft a rich texture. The harmonic underpinning supports the tonal modulation, enhancing dramatic tension. Let's just dive into the bar by bar analysis and explore Bach's polyphonic writing and harmonic progression. In bar 27, Bach begins in the voice. The subject begins in the bass voice, introduced with a four note motif E, F sharp, G, A, and E minor. In E minor, this motif form the foundation for following imitative and sequential developments. The subject is presented along, uh, alone, allowing the listener to clearly hear the motif before any polyphonic interaction occurs. By isolating the subject at the beginning, Bach ensure its clarity and prepare for the contrabunker take treatment that will follow. The answer appears in the soprano voice from Bar 29, which is here. This is the answer uh, to upbeat, the upbeat of bar 29 to 32 with the four note motif B, C sharp, D and E. Shifting the ton tonality to B minor, dom dominant minor to E minor. The sub counter subject in the bass voice support the answer. So this is the counter subject that support the answer. Okay, so the, the melody that support the counter subject 
others that support the answer is now counter subject. It begins to create a fewer texture where the independent lines move rhythmically and melodically in dialogue. And the ascending sequence in counter subject create a sense of outward motion, pulling the music forward harmonically and melodically. Bach is setting the stage for further exploration of subject and counter subject. So look further in bar 30 to 31a, the counter subject undergoes a sequence in this bar. So in bar 30, there are some sequences. These are the sequences that develop from here. So this is the or, uh, first appearance of the melody, and then it followed by the sequences that I highlight in green. It reinforces the contrapuntal texture and helps drive the harmonic progression. The counter subject introduces ascending sequence that are mirrored by the bass line, adding depth to the polyphonic interaction. The ascending motion builds tension and the sequences allow Bach to explore the harmonic possibilities within B minor while leading towards a cadence. In bar 32 to 33, the ascending sequence in the counter melody continue to develop. So these are the sequences in the counter melody continue to develop. And in B minor, we encounter the progression 7, 5, 1, and so on, maintaining the tension in the dominant minor key in B minor. The interplay between ascending sequence and the rest of the texture enhances the polyphonic with right hand and left hand playing complementary roles in moving towards the next subject entry. The music remains firmly in B minor in this area, okay? but the harmonic motions hints return to E minor as the dominant 7 prepare for a return of the subject. Over here, there is a dominant 7 that prepare for the entry of the tonic key and entry of the subject. In bar 34 to 36, the subject is restated in the soprano, the right hand, the right hand part. This time in is in E minor, reaffirming the home key. The four note motif E, F sharp, G, A return, bringing familiarity and thematic unity to the piece. The counter subject once again accompany the subject, this time in ascending sequences that provide harmonic support and increase the polyphonic texture. The polyphonic writing in the ascending sequence in the counter subject create a dialogue with a soprano voice, which is here. These are the dialogue with the right hand top melody. The purposely by uh, of doing this is to reinstate, restate, is to restate the subject in soprano, but reinforces the importance of motif while developing the counter subject through ascending sequences, adding variety and interest to the polyphonic structure. In round thirty six to thirty seven. The counter subject takes on a more prominent role with descending sequence that complement the subject restatement in the left hand. The four note motif appears in fragment, fragmented form E, D, C sharp, and A. So, I'm so sorry, the subject restatement in bar 36, 35 is over here in the right hand. And when it comes to bar 36, there is a four note motif that appears in the right hand, which is as E, D, C sharp, and A. The descending sequence in the counter subject over here. In the left hand, provide contrast to the earlier ascending sequence, which is here going up. Pre previously, it was going up. So here, now it's going downwards. It creating a balanced structure. The left hand introduced new fragmented melody that 
complement the right hand um, counter subject which is over here Fra uh, in fragmented phrase the descending sequence creates a sense of resolution and finality while the harmonic progression prepares for the upcoming modulation to D major in bar 38 to 39 the music modulate to D major, the subdominant of A minor, which is the subdominant of uh, A minor, and the relative major of B minor. The harmonic progression in D major moves through 2, 2, 7, 5, 1, and 4, with the dominant 7 preparing for the cadences. In next bar, there is the dominant 7 in B minor, Okay, uh, that prepare for the cadences. The polyphonic writing in left and right hand engage in a dialogue of fragmented melodic idea, such as uh, over here, answer here. This is a question answer dialogue, which is very uh, interesting to enhance the contrapuntal complexity. This modulation to D major provides a bright contrast to the darker. E minor tonality. The cadence in B minor set serves as a preparation for the return to the home key. In bar 27 to 39, bar use of polyphonic in this field create a rich texture that is both intellectually stimulating and emotionally uh, engaging. The subject and counter subject interact through sequences. Crack fragmented motif and dialogue between the voices. The purpose of this polyphonic writing is to create a complex contrapuntal structure that allows for the simultaneous exploration of multiple melodic lines. Bach uses this structure to develop the thematic material and to highlight the relationship between the voices, creating a piece that is both harmonically rich and polyphonically intricate. In terms of effect, the polyphonic writing allows the listener to engage with the music on multiple levels as each voice has its own melodic integrity while contributing to the overall harmonic progression. The cadences provide moments of resolution, giving the piece a sense of forward movement despite the complexity of the polyphonic structure. In conclusion, Bach Masterful use of polyphonic and harmonic progression in this section showcases an unparalleled skill in combining melodic invention with harmonic depth. The result is a piece that re rewards close listening, listening and analysis, as each bar reveals new layers of interaction between the voices and modulation that shape the overall structure of the piece. If interested, uh, to purchase the full analysis of this Bach's Partita, um, you can contact me, I'm Jenny, through pianoplaying at yahoo.com that you see on the screen. Uh, the payment can be made through PayPal uh, or PayNow, PayLow for Singapore students. And for international students, you can make payment through PayPal. So now you can make a screenshot. I'm going to erase all the drawing so that you can Take a screenshot of uh, the first three pages of this analysis. So, uh, if you really like this analysis in such a detailed form, you can uh, contact me through email. So, this is the first page, and I'm going to give you the description in point form later on. Okay, so please uh, take a screenshot for this first page, and then the second page is here. Okay, I'm going to erase this. So this is the second page of the analysis. This is the third page. subscribe to my channel because I may want to continue to do this analysis in future. Thank you for watching and the description is over here.
So these are the description for first three pages. This is from bar 14 to 26. Okay, hope to see you again. Bye-bye.